one thing, become an ink master and win $100,000. I didn't come here to make friends. I didn't come here to make buddies. You're my competition and I will destroy you. My strategy to win this competition is to have fun with each tattoo I do, have fun with each client I work with, and get to the finale, and then slice the throat of the person who's ahead of me, and then win. This is gonna be awesome, man. We're gonna do something really beautiful for you. The rules of thumb when approaching a cover-up are you're not covering a tattoo. What you're doing is you're actually camouflaging it. The darks are always going to be there. The blacks are certainly always going to be there. So what you're trying to do is work with what's there and make something brand new for the person. I lay down 90% of my clients just to make them comfortable and feel at ease throughout the whole entire tattoo, and that helps so much. The actual basics of a tribal tattoo, very solid black, fill in and incredibly clean lines. Mostly clean lines that run parallel to each other. So everything is almost like perfectly spaced, geometrically or in a flowing manner. This is another monster tattoo from you. Go big or go home. But don't finish, go home. James, we feel that you had the best tattoo. Thank you. It's definitely a little unnerving to go into black and gray up against Shane O'Neill. He's one of the top artists in the country doing black and gray. You know, when I started tattooing, I was immediately drawn to black and gray. When I picked your name, I was like, yeah. Because I've admired your work for a while. Oh, awesome, man. I like his ideas, incorporating all the baker's tools. There's some cool elements in there. I'll be able to display, like, really smooth shading. I feel like I have an opportunity to win one now. Shane. I'm loving the black and gray work and the drop shadow on the skin. Thank you. This is what black and gray is supposed to look like. You hit it. Good job. Thank you. We've all heard the saying, picture paints a thousand words. Today, the elimination tattoo will do just the same. You'll be using all of your precision skills to create a photorealistic tattoo. Photorealism is probably the toughest thing to do in tattooing. You just have to look at a picture and duplicate it on the skin. Your design will need to look like an actual photo. The competition is getting tougher. The pressure is on, so everybody wants to collect their best job, and I want to win this. I love it. It's great. This is absolutely unbelievable. A photo is a captured moment in time, a specific millisecond and Leah's tattoo looks like exactly that. If she flexed her quad muscle, you'd almost feel like the snow leopard was gonna move and like pounce on something. You have that really cool other back paw that comes out to the side and that really gives this leopard a turning flow. All in all, you executed a really beautiful tattoo today. The best one of this competition for you by far. Welcome back. Thank you. Over the years, the American traditional tattoo has evolved into a technicolor style all its own. A great American traditional tattoo should have a lot of black, very clean outlines, bright colors with a limited palette. This is all I was able to tattoo for the first year of my career. I'm going to be good at this. It's American traditional, real simple. It's got to be bold. My pasty skin finally comes in handy for something. My goal is in five hours, get done about five tattoos. How was this for you? The whole first year of my apprenticeship, all I could do is go through books, trace them out, tattoo them exactly how they are. This competition is to hand out the prize to somebody who can do it all. That's what it boils down to. In your case, man, you know, you, you hit today's mark. The client told you what they wanted. You gave them six of what he wanted, and you did some nice traditional work. You can thank your mentor for this one. And Josh, you had the tattoo of the day, man. Thank you. You put your traditional boots on today. Good job. Thank you. To do a good pinup, you got to do the face, the expression. Great. And normally, I'll start at the bottom and work my way up. But here, there is time constraints, so I went right to the head. Get the face exactly how I want it to look, like really tight detail. I'd rather get the face done while we're fresh and not stressing about the last half hour, you know what I mean? The judges want a full body pinup from head to toe, so that's going to mean that the faces are going to be a lot smaller than some of the other competitors are used to doing. It's an action pinup, which is just extraordinary. To put an expression on her face, that just blew my mind, man. 
the hair flow. You got the red accents in her hair, the red ribbon. Tremendous job, man. I love the way you left a real clear little negative spot under the pupil of the eye. It really makes that lid come in. Overall, you killed this thing. It's technically a beautiful tattoo. It's proportionate, and the choice of using the action in the tattoo makes it stand out from the stiff tattoos. Great job, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. 20 minutes of daydreaming has passed through my head. <laughs> I get lost in the hair just like daydreaming that shit. Today's style, like super smooth, portrait black and gray tattoos, they're super stressful for some people, but it's relaxing to me. I just love duplicating images. Aside from my canvas passing out and not letting me finish it, I'm clearly gonna win this challenge. Skin's pretty much how I expected it to be for this spot. An extra two hours would be awesome. Then I can relax, you know what I mean? <laughs> Out of all the portraits available, you chose the child. I didn't want you to think I was taking the easy way out. I felt like this one would shine the most. The smile and the glitter in her eyes and everything. The hair was pretty crazy to take on. I've done a lot of child portraits myself, and ones with teeth are without a doubt the most difficult of children's portraits to do. It really uh, looks like the photograph. Really nice, accurate job. And the photograph, the light that's in her eyes is the reflection of the flash. Flash, yeah. And so you had to move that and use your white in a different spot to really make it appear lifelike. Awesome, I'm glad you noticed. Amazing touch, yeah, man. You really pulled the likeness together. You definitely have the less is more approach. You did the name and the portrait. Nothing more needed. Great job, man. Thank you. James, you're up first. Let's talk about your 12-hour tattoo. I wanted to focus on all the aspects of shading, blending, line work, depth, and show that I did learn and do what I know I can do in that amount of time. Dude, you're an amazing tattooer, man. You bang out big work. Shane, you're next. Let's talk about your 12-hour tattoo. The shading in the face especially is so soft. The use of the negative space in the chin, the really dramatic hard outline. This thing looks like a carved statue. I've seen a lot of these done, and it is so easy to just jack these things up. To give it this dimension and the way you made this thing look, how it was kind of statuesque, you really excelled with this. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Tommy, let's take a look at your 12-hour tattoo. This is a big, impressive, dark piece. I really like the outcome of it. All the detail you did wrapped around the horns and then the helmet set this tattoo apart. You really hit this on the head. Shane, after discussing your work, the judges have decided you have earned the title of Ink Master. Congratulations, man. Congrats, man. Enjoy this victory.